Amen. Thank you to the Musos. Let's give them a round of applause. It is so good to be together. I hope that you are loving being with your sisters and your moms and your friends. It's so great. Now, I don't know what kind of chaos you left at home, or maybe you left a quiet and still home and you feel like you've actually arrived at chaos, but for me, I definitely left chaos at home. Um, I got a message from the person that was babysitting our boys. She said that my youngest boy was in one of their bedrooms and had seen what he thought was a can of deodorant, and he had put it under his arms, and a few seconds later, he started to burn, and everyone in the room started to choke, and they realized he had put pepper spray on his skin under his arms, and um, the solution for that day, when he went to bed, my oldest son said to him, Benji, let's get some peas. So they got two packets of frozen peas and put one under one armpit, one under the other armpit. And my Benji went to sleep that night with his armpits and uh, with peas under his armpits. Needless to say, he woke up the next day with a, a thousand peas all around his body. But um, so yes, I have definitely left chaos at home. Now, we often get asked the question, how do you come up with your themes for Sparkle every single year? Do you want to know? Okay, it's very simple. Our precious and darling, Susie Crawford, yes, she takes some time out every year and she goes away and she prays and she prays for us One Life ladies asking God, what is it, the thing that you are wanting to say to the ladies this year? And so when she came with what she was carrying in her heart for all of us ladies and she read to us the scripture, you must know how excited our team got because we just were thrilled with her faith and what she had brought, what she had felt the Lord say. So I'm going to read that scripture to you. Matthew 21, verse 21 to 22. I tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go and throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. Okay? It goes on to say, if you believe, you will receive. Whatever you ask for in prayer. Don't you want to say amen to that? We got so excited about this verse because let's be honest, ladies, we all have a few mountains in our lives, right? What is a mountain? A mountain is something that is immovable. And I don't know about you, but every now and then we go on holiday to the Berg, and when I look at some of these mountains, I think they're not only immovable, but they're also impossible. It seems impossible to climb. And I want to tell you, ladies, today, that as faith rises, the Word of God says that those very things that we think are impossible, those very relationships that we think will never, never be fixed, that pain that you feel you can never, ever let go of, that unforgiveness that seems like it is with you for the rest of your life, I want to tell you that this weekend, God is going to move those mountains out of your lives. I've got to be honest, and maybe there are some of you here today that says, I long to have faith, but there are moments when I doubt. And I must tell you that in my walk with the Lord, I have had moments where I've doubted, can God do this? Am I asking too much? But I want to tell you that there's a man in the Bible who has an amazing relationship with Jesus. He was related to Jesus, and he too had a moment where he doubted. And I want to read, this is Luke chapter 7, verse 19 talking about John the Baptist. And it says here, Jesus, John is sitting with his disciples and Jesus is performing miracles. And he says to his disciples, go to Jesus and ask him this question. Are you the one to come or should we be expecting someone else? John knew who Jesus was. John knew what Jesus would do. And yet he had a moment in his walk where he thought, is that you, Jesus? Or is there someone else that's coming? And you know, Jesus' response to John was not anger. It wasn't frustration. It wasn't like, come on, cousin, you should know better than this. Jesus responds in a way that is so affirming. He responds in a way that is so full of love. And ladies, I want to say to us all today, if you are sitting here and you have got doubt in your heart, that in the Father's heart in heaven, there is space for your doubt. Jesus had space for the doubt that John had. 
But Jesus doesn't want us to live there. Jesus didn't want John to remain there. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is found in 1 Kings chapter 18. It's about this prophet Elijah. Many of you will know him. He was so hardcore and awesome. I just love it. And um, he, he, the, the nation at the time is far from God. They're worshiping other, other gods. They're worshiping Baal gods. And th- at that time, the land was actually in a drought and a famine. And so Elijah goes to the king and he goes to the prophets and he says to them, you guys, to the, there's 500 prophets, he says, you build your sacrifice and let's see if your God can burn that sacrifice. I'm going to build mine. We'll see which is the living God. And so as I read it, it's kind of like the, the morning, those 500 bowl prophets, they get together, they put the sacrifice on, they're calling on the name of their God. And you know what's happening? Absolutely nothing. These bowl prophets are going crazy mad. And as I look at it, it seems like the day is going on. And it, for me, it looks like it's late afternoon. Elijah's had enough of waiting. He thinks it's done. They can see their God is not coming. Why? Because he doesn't exist. And so he builds his altar. He digs a trench and he fills it with water. He puts his sacrifice on and he pours water on it once and again and again. And he makes sure that that altar, to everyone's knowledge, is absolutely soaking wet. And then he prays to the only living God. And in an instant, fire falls from heaven and that sacrifice is burnt up and gone. And at that moment, Elijah knew that everyone's faith was not in the God that doesn't exist, but their faith was in the one and only living God. And then Elijah says, now I'm going to pray for rain, that the true God, the living God, will come down and heal our land. And so he takes his servant and he climbs up onto this hill and he goes down on his knees and he starts to pray. And I can imagine he is so filled with faith. He has just seen God rain down fire and consume something. I don't know if you saw that. I would be like, oh my gosh, my God can do anything. What is it to bring some rain? And he goes on on his knees and he prays, oh God, who performs miracles, you've done a miracle today, send your rain. And he says to his servant, go up that hill and tell me what you see. And a servant comes back and says, I see nothing. Okay, and he prays some more. God, living God, I know that you are there. I know that you can do amazing things. Come and send your rain. And he says to his servant, go up that hill and go and tell me what you see. And his servant comes back and says, I see nothing. And this happens again and again and again and again. And on the seventh time that Elijah is praying, calling out to God, he says to his servant, go and tell me what you see. And a servant runs down to him and says, Elijah, Elijah, I see a cloud as small as a man's fist coming over the horizon. And Elijah gets up, and I can imagine, he, or he then says to the servant, you go down and tell that king to get on his horse and get home because the rains are coming. And ladies, I want to tell you that you might be sitting here with doubt tonight, and Jesus has space for that. But he doesn't want you to live there. And for some of us, we've been trusting for God to move mountains in our lives, and it just hasn't happened. And I want to tell you, ladies, that we are believing for God to do miracles this weekend. Let us be like Elijah and keep on praying and keep on praying and keep on praying and keep on praying until we see something happen. And so I hope that your faith is stirred. I hope that you are ready to embrace all that God has for you this weekend. Scattered around the property, you will see some boards that say, tell us your story. There's a piece of paper there where we we would love to hear what God is doing in your life. So often we have these conferences and amazing things happen and we never get to hear about it. So please, if God, or I'm telling you, when God does something amazing in your life in the next 24 hours, please jot it on a piece of paper and pop it into that box. We would love to hear. It can be anonymous or you can put your details on. We would love to hear and give God praise for all he has done.